Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Wayne's World. So I would say today's video may not be for everybody. And some people may like it, some people may not, or it may just be for a specific audience. You wanna find out more? You better stay tuned. So Dwayne, what do you mean people don't like watching your content? Well, let me kind of explain. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I laugh because, you know, I know that uh, there are people out there that probably, you know, hate lawn care, right? And I know there's people out there that could think like, why do you care so much about your lawn, right? I think it's a very niche group that we are all kind of part of and everybody that's watching this can probably relate to. So, you know, that's where I'm saying this video is not necessarily going to be for the masses. This is not, Dwayne's World is not a, a channel that has went viral because of the fact that, you know, we, we talk about lawn care here and about real mowers and about Bermuda grass. You know, a subject that's probably not very exciting to most people. Uh, but we get it, right? The lawn care enthusiast gets it. You guys get it. But not the majority of people. So Today's video is really more about... Um, wanting to see what's happening in the world of Dwayne's world as it relates to his lawns. Now I use the word lawns in plural because I do have a front yard. <laughs> I mentioned it during my last video uh, that yes, Dwayne does have a front yard and I have a backyard. I just feature most of my content or all of my content up to this point on the backyard because, you know, of course it's a bigger lawn, you know, it's something that's easier to uh, feature on YouTube. Uh, there's more to do with it. Uh, you know, it just, it has a lot more content built into it uh, than my front yard. My front yard is much smaller and I'm going to basically show you in today's video and I think today's video is also going to be kind of a prequel um, to some of the things that are coming up. You know, I teased in one of my last videos about an overseeding project. Um, so that's something I will absolutely feature on YouTube. But today's video is kind of to set that stage. There's no mowing in this video. There's no, um, you know, equipment really being used in this video. I really kind of just wanted to showcase my front lawn because I've never shown that to you guys. Um, so again, for those that watch my channel that are, you know, followers of mine, um, that really enjoy, you know, looking at things that I put out there on YouTube, this video is for them. So I'm not expecting this video to go viral by any means. Again, it's just to show you guys uh, my front yard, the challenges I've had, the things I plan on, and why I've decided to overseed. And with that, let me show you the front yard. All right, so this is a camera shot you guys have never seen before. This is the front of the Dwayne's World Estates. So I'm gonna kind of take you guys through a little bit more of an in-depth look at my front yard here and why I've even decided to do that overseeding project that I talked about uh, this year. Uh, but let me kind of walk you through and show you what I got. Now, for the one thing I'll just say in this video is please disregard the color of my lawn just because I did do a hard cut to it right now and it was deliberate that I wanted to scalp it. Now I'm gonna be scalping it down even further but that's why the color is probably gonna look a little off and you're gonna see some what appears to be dormancy, uh, which it's not technically dormancy, it's scalp action. So uh, let me kind of just take you on for a closer look here and show you my front yard. All right, this is a little bit of a flower bed here where we have a fountain that goes pretty much all the time. Uh, you know, it's definitely um, needs a little bit of hedge work, but at the same time, definitely love that area of my lawn. And then we have this area of my lawn here, which is just pretty much for, you know, uh, more of a flower bed, so to speak. Uh, but if we look at the lawn itself, you can see what I'm talking about. Now, again, regardless of the color, you see all the bare spots. Now, this is the area of my home. Because of this overhang here, I do get a lot of shade. And that's more than likely why I'm having some of this area be a trouble spot for my Bermuda. Now, believe it or not, this flower bed, I have even, even extended further out. Originally with the original homeowner, um, it only came to about this light and went over. So what I try to do is extend it out even further to really be able to help that Bermuda. But I may need to even look at that even further and move my flower bed even further out. So again, that is just the reality of Bermuda. It really hates uh, the, uh, the fact that there's any time there's shade. So let me kind of show you where else I've had a lot of issues. So if you look here, there's a pretty big massive spot there, one fairly close thereafter. And all throughout my lawn, I have spots like that. And this is areas, again, where the Bermuda generally in the past has always been really healthy. So my theory here is that these are all spring dead spots. 
And now I never did a transplant, no meaning I never put any plugs or anything. I just kind of hoped that it would grow in uh, as time went on and the heat picked up, but it just never did. And that's what's been my frustration uh, when it came to, you know, the front yard and having all of these troubled areas. Now, the one area I would say that's underneath my tree here that appears to be bare, this has always been a tough area. I, I've never quite been able to get my Bermuda to grow here, likely because of my olive tree. Now, the olive tree I've actually really pruned out um, in the last week here. Uh, it was definitely much bigger um, and had a lot more shade cover. So this will help, again, when it comes to overseeding. But I've even done that earlier in the, in the, in the spring season to kind of help the Bermuda in that area. But it just really has a tough time. So again, I may extend out that flower bed um, because I think that may help. Um, the one area I just also wanted to show you as well, which I also know was spring dead spot, and it was kind of interesting what I did and it started to work um, and I've actually been happy with it and I'll probably do it again next year. So if you look at this spot here, this entire spot was actually bare. And where you can see some dormancy and some green in the middle here, I actually put a patch of grass here that I got from my backyard. And it actually rooted in and actually worked out really well. So had I done this earlier in the year, I think that would have cured a lot of these areas. Now I just chose not to do it, uh, but this was an area I figured I'd try to experiment with. Um, kind of in some of the live edges around the back of my lawn, you know, I typically have a lot of Bermuda that likes to grow onto my gravel. And I pretty much just had taken that Bermuda and transplanted it here. So that's why on that back end, my thought is rather than clean it up, I really want to leave it. And the reason why I want to leave it is so I can use it for transplants whenever I have problem areas in my lawn where I need to do that sort of um, uh, plugging uh, to really kind of help the Bermuda out. So again, that's my front yard. I wanted to show you guys, I wish I had taken a picture of it before I actually mowed it here. Uh, you would have had a little more green on the lawn, but at the same time, I think you guys understand. And even when I back up here from a distance, you know, the lawn looks pretty good. Okay. So one thing that is a little bit unusual about uh, my property and the property line is pretty much where the sprinkler is at, right there. Maybe uh, actually where that palm seed is right there. That is our property line. So if you look here, this side of the lawn belongs to the neighbor and this side belongs to me. Neighbor's lawn here for just a moment here because I think this is going to help explain why it's so important that you do properly spray out your perennial ryegrass as you're coming out of um, dormancy next year in the spring um, so your Bermuda can thrive. Um, I think there's a misconception or a myth that some people believe that you can just let the perennial rye kind of stay there and the heat will pretty much blast it out. And that's partially true, meaning that it can help the heat, obviously, you know, heat and perennial rye do not mix. However, at the same time, it's not 100% the case. And let me kind of give you an example of why that is. Show you. So if you look here, there is obviously green through this lawn that you can see, okay? And you may believe a lot of this green is actually Bermuda, and it's not. Now, truth be told, I think the last time their gardener came out, he did scalp it down because my feeling is they're probably gonna overseed again this year and the gardener's just getting it ready and kind of eliminating um, more of the uh, grass than you know doing it all at one time, which I completely understand, which is why I'm doing kind of that hard cut as well. So as the grass here is greener in some areas than the other, where a lot of that higher grass is coming up, that's all perennial rye grass. Now that's the main difference between perennial rye and annual rye is perennial rye will come back every year as generally annual rye will not. Now, some people will ask, well, why do you use perennial rye then instead of annual rye? And it really is ultimately your choice. But the reason why most people go with perennial rye is because of the fact that it, the color is much better. It's a much better cultivar um, than annual rye. I um, tend to find a better seed with it. It's more expensive, but at the same time, you get a much better result um, in the overall look of the lawn. Now, the reason why, again, I bring up the fact that the, it's so important you spray this out, even though now, because it's cooled off, some of this perennial rye has grown up, that just tells you that it was always alive in the summertime. Even though it went dormant, it was still alive. And so anytime a grass is still alive in your existing turf, it's going to be drawing nutrients and it's going to be wanting to kind of have its share 
of, you know, kind of what's ever in the soil. And that really hurts the Bermuda when it has to compete with other grasses that are there. Now, Bermuda is an alpha grass, so Bermuda a lot of times can help overtake a lot of it. But at the same time, it's a struggle that the Bermuda should not be experiencing. Now, generally, when it comes to rye grass, especially any winter grass or a cool season turf, cool season turf, even though Bermuda loves nitrogen, you know, cool season turf is the same way where it really absorbs a lot of the nitrogen. So anytime you're trying to feed it, a lot of times you're feeding both the perennial rye and you're feeding the uh, Bermuda. So this is where, again, it's so important that you spray it out so that way it truly dies and your Bermuda can ultimately take over. And that's the right way to do it. And that's what I will be doing this year when I go ahead and oversee this lawn. Now, again, I've even debated, do I really do it? Is it worth it? And a lot of the experts will say, don't do it. Just let it go dormant and just, you know, uh, take care of it next spring. Your grass will be much healthier. healthier. And I'm sure that's all true. However, right now, I would say even though the yard now and after overseeding, it's probably going to look phenomenal. I would say his lawn has really, really struggled this year. Now, again, it's not because of lack of irrigation, a lack of mowing. Um, even though they don't mow nearly as much as I mow, they typically have their gardener come out once a week or, or so. But even then, that's better than a lot of homes where they, they, they just don't mow the lawns. As we're in my lawn, you know, I've had similar issues. Um, but at the same time, you know, I feel like mine are probably from Spring Dead Spot, which was an over applying of nitrogen last year, or it could have been uh, from fungus and I didn't properly treat, um, which is ultimately why I have some of the issues that I do. Now, again, shade aside, you know, the Spring Dead Spot areas are definitely a different concern. So with that, that's kind of just a tutorial of my front yard here because you guys have never seen it before. So hopefully that was some good information for you guys uh, in preparation of the overseeding project uh, that I will be doing. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys now have a little bit better of idea of what my thought process is and why I'm choosing to oversee my front yard with the perennial rye. <laughs> I even realized my, my, my son back there uh, play, playing in the grass there. So uh, future CEO of uh, Dwayne's World there. So uh, definitely uh, getting his uh, camera action. <laughs> I don't know, he loves throwing paper these days. You know, I think he thinks everything's a paper airplane without even having to make it. Okay, so going back to the video, uh, one of the things I think is very ironic about my home especially is I've lived in my home for about four years now. The previous homeowner every year had overseeded with perennial rye. That includes my backyard as well, not just my front yard. He had actually overseeded everything. And it would look phenomenal. When I've seen pictures of it, yeah, it looked on point, right? He had a gardening service. They did a great job. Um, but, you know, kind of me taking over the house and me kind of understanding, oh, wait, you're not supposed to do that, right? I stopped overseeding. The ironic thing also, though, is that all the homes in my area uh, generally overseed. It is probably the norm more so than people that are not overseeding. Now, you may be wondering, well, why is that? Why are so many people kind of breaking the rule of overseeding the Bermuda lawns? And it really has to do with business. Because if you think about it, gardening services in this area want to be able to work all year round. And by overseeding their customers' lawns, it allows them to continue to mow and mow and mow all through the winter months and not just be something that's reserved for spring and summertime and or early fall. So by them being able to do this, it's really about keeping their business sustainable, which makes perfect sense. Um, so because I don't have a gardener, it doesn't necessarily always make sense for me to overseed. However, the reason why I'm overseeding my front is, like I said, I had a really, really tough time this year. and I want to have a lawn that just is on fire, right? And I know that perennial rye is going to stripe like nobody's business. And I'm really, really excited about that, right? So at the same time, you know, that's kind of my thoughts on why I'm choosing to do that. You know, again, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch today's video. And as always, be excellent and party on. <laughs> say, say bye, Gavin. Okay.